Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wiley Drake. It's been my privilege to serve in the United States since 2005 as a chaplain at large for an organization that I have a great deal of respect for, and that is the Minuteman Project and its founder, Jim Gilchrist. I want to share with you a report from Jim that combines my efforts as chaplain at large and his efforts as the director of Project Minuteman, and uh, so I would encourage you to listen up and prayerfully consider what I'm going to share. The public response to Operation Normandy has been overwhelming. Jim says, I'm putting together a frequently asked question section on the Minuteman Project to answer most of the questions about this enormous operation. For now, please refer to this posting as a general rule of thumb to answer some of your questions. Jim says, and I say as a chaplain, we are going to the border on our own as a sovereign person to the exercise of our First Amendment rights by bringing forth our grievances against our government in a public display on U.S. property. We expect to travel from San Diego to Brownsville, Texas. During the 30-day event establishing outpost and visiting the outpost of others. In an undisclosed areas along the 2,000 mile, what we're calling the front line. Participation is open to everyone. And there's only one rule, whatever you do, stay within the rule of the law. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm a chaplain to the Minuteman Project. I am not an outlaw. I will do my best to obey the law, unless it gets to the point, as it did in Scripture, where they had to obey God rather than man. Other considerations Jim asked us to follow. Each person should be aware that ignorance of any laws in the border areas will not exempt you from being accountable for any laws that you break. Each person is responsible to provide his own food, shelter, equipment, transportation, and all other expenses not mentioned in this announcement. Each person is responsible to his or her own safety and health, including providing for their own medical services if the need arises. Each person is a sovereign individual, and no one has the authority to command others. I do not have the authority, Jim says, to give orders to you or to anyone else. And as chaplain, I say the amen. You do not have authority to give orders to me or anyone else. However, these rules will probably differ for those persons participating in a group of border demonstrators or observer volunteers. Some of these groups may be as numerous as eight or nine hundred, according to information given to Minuteman Project last week. Who should participate and who should a participant report to? There are some active Minutemen women organizations carefully patrolling the border. If you know of a group, then you might want to contact that group to inquire about their need for volunteers. You can always just make your stand on the border alone. But most people like to show up in groups. We can do a lot more together than we can separately. It's larger groups that are safer, especially if adversaries opposed to anyone who wants immigration laws enforced show up to harass, intimidate, or threaten you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not there to be outlaws. We're there to support the law. We will do everything legal. What are some of the threats our rights to engage in free speech over this matter? 
we know that there may be many of the no-border anti-rule of law hooligans. They'll most likely be enthusiastically inspired by anti-free speech propaganda mills like the Southern Poverty Law Center. And let me say about that organization, they are not Southern, even though they're located in the South, because they're not Southern gentlemen and ladies. Southern poverty, poverty, they're not in poverty. They do not help people in poverty. They're very wealthy. So they're not Southern, they're not poverty, and they are not legal. So they are not a Southern poverty law center. The National Council of La Raza, that means the race. They're playing the race card. The Anti-Defamation League, another bad group, and several dozen others. Each of these outfits are very, very rich, hundreds of millions of dollars, combined with the race, La Raza, receiving about $11 million annually from you, ladies and gentlemen. They get it through Congress, but it's your money and my money. And they will dedicate some of their huge wealth to generate as much hatred for Operation Normandy as its participants as they possibly can. You can expect some relentless hate speech spewing forth from these fiery cannons. They will be allied with some dirty journalists who will target our participants for public humiliation in an effort to discourage participation. I have had first-hand experience with all these fanatical adversaries, and I can assure you, Jim says, that none of them are open to free speech and respectful and objective about their debate over the illegal immigration crisis. And I, as a member of the media, I, as the host of an international congressional prayer conference of Washington, D.C., television and radio network will tell you we're clean news media. We tell the truth. They are dirty and they lie. These adversarial groups appear to be closely tied to Brown Berets, a Mexican hate group equivalent to the KKK the Black Panthers, and Adolf Hitler's Nazis. The Brown Berets were the security guards of choice deployed by Illinois Congressman Louis Guterres when he visited a Catholic church several years ago in Pomona to speak in support of the illegal alien primarily for Mexico. The Brown Berets physically blocked the Minutemen Project entourage from entering into the church so that we could not hear what pro-illegal alien Congressman Guterres was talking about. As far as I know, none of the dozens of immigration law enforcement advocacy organizations around the country receive any grants from federal or state government, as do the many adversarial groups who are opposed to immigration law enforcement. Folks, they're opposed to law enforcement. Therefore, we are left to our own resources to carry out a mission that Congress and the White House have deliberately ignored over the past decade. Regarding militias, militia members have the same rights and responsibilities as any other person on U.S. territory. Militias have their own chain of command and code of discipline to which its members adhere. They are not answerable to you, to me as chaplain or Jim as leader, or anyone else. They are answerable only to the rule of law, as we all are, just like Jim Gilchrist and Wiley Drake. Furthermore, militias have no authority 
over anyone, and you are not expected to obey any commands from them. Regarding firearms, firearms are allowed to be openly carried in many areas of the border. However, you should confer with persons in the area where you take your stand on the border as to what the laws are governing the possession of firearms. Carrying a firearm is up to each individual. All that is necessary to carry it in compliance with the laws of the area, state and county, etc., in which you'll be going to establish your outpost. A caution here from Jim. There are several federally governed Bureau of Land Management, a.k.a. BLM areas, along the border where the possession of a firearm is illegal and you can be arrested or cited for having a firearm with you. Make sure you check the law of the territory you are in to be sure. Persons unable to come to the border areas can deploy themselves from May 1st through 30th at any one of the 51 Mexican consulates scattered throughout the United States. In my opinion, the huge number of consulates in the United States from a one foreign country is indicative of the infestations and intentions to literally transfer huge segments of the population of Mexico and Central America into the United States, and I agree with that. No one could convince us that the irresponsible and reckless disregard for our immigration laws has been anything less than a politically inspired, covert, and blatant invasion of the United States of America. It will take 10 months to recruit, to organize, and launch this event. We have a term in the military called May Day. May Day. May Day. That means distress. We are calling May Day for America. May the 1st for Operation Normandy. If you're familiar with the Normandy invasion of France, in 1944 I was one year old then you have an idea of how large and logistically complicated this event will be. However, there is one difference. We're not going to the border to invade anyone. We're going there to bring unprecedented national awareness of the invasion that's going on. Please click on the website and jump in at the Minuteman Project and let us know if you're going to be on the border to join an existing observation group or creating your own group to go or just going along. The Minuteman Project will try to refer you to a group in your area where you would like to exercise your right to free speech and at the same time conduct border observation anywhere from Brownsville, Texas, to San Diego, California. And by the way, we use a term here at the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s communications channel. Number one, we say this, boots on the ground are prayer in the air. You can be boots on the ground anywhere from San Diego to Brownsville, Texas. Put your boots on and be boots on the ground. If you cannot come or do not want to come or feel threatened at coming, do not feel intimidated. You can still be a part of Operation Normandy. You don't have to be boots on the ground. We hope you will be. I will be. I won't be every day. But there will be times I'll be boots on the ground. There will be other times Pastor Wiley Drake, the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., will not be boots on the ground, but be prayer in the air. And we would encourage you to pray with us. We would encourage you to send an email and get our prayer line number because we will have our communications line open for prayer the entire time. 
Day 1, D-Day, May the 1st, 2015. And you can go on the website and do what Jim says. Jump in. By the way, we have already begun to pray for this event, for the Minuteman Project, and now for Operation Normandy. If you would like to join, we pray 23 hours a week, 23 hours a week for this project. We pray at 8 a.m. for two hours, Monday through Friday. We pray at 12 noon, Monday through Friday, and we pray at 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Now, those are East Coast times, and you'll have to figure out your time zone. Then we also pray at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning for one hour. And then on Sunday morning, we pray two hours. Now, you total all that up and you'll find out that we're praying 23 hours for many things. But one of the things at the top of our list is the Minuteman Project and Operation Normandy. We will be prayerfully supportive. We'll be boots on the ground and prayer in the air. We hope you'll join us. If you'd like to reach me, you can reach me 24-7 on my cell phone, 714-865-8132. Or if you'd like to join during those 23 hours of prayer for the Minuteman Project and Operation Normandy, call this phone number, 712 712- 432-1690. When you call that number, it will ask you to identify yourself. You do not have to do that. You can ignore that, but you do have to put in your access code, 399-430-POUND. And when you do, you'll be joined into a prayer meeting with Pastor Wiley Drake, the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., and many other prayer warriors as you pray together, and as you become boots on the ground and prayer in the air. So here's how you do it. During those hours, and if you need a copy of the schedule, just email me at wileywiley at att.net, and I'll send you a copy of the prayer schedule of those 23 hours, the exact time, and so forth. But to contact us during those 23 hours for the Minuteman Project and for Operation Normandy, call 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND and join us. Boots on the ground are prayer in the air. And as Jim Gilchrist would say, jump in.